it's it's interesting to me in a way, especially doing the show like this, because it's like it's a challenge, you know. Because back in the day, it was like it's like oh shit, we're losing the crowd. Where's the Jameson? But boom, and everyone's like fuck yeah. You know, Did you really have those moments? Every every night, really. You know, but it was easy. It was like part of the thing, you know, which is a bad way to roll. Hello, I'm Ben, and we're with Mac in the latest edition of Enemy in Conversation. Hello, Mac. Hello. How are you? Good. Welcome we're... back to the UK. Thank you. Here we are. Once... Hackney Empire, baby. So you yeah. played last night. The, yeah, we're going to do another one tonight, another one tomorrow, and... Um, A residency. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, three. The whole tour. Threes. Three as in... Yeah, 12 total, three, 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 three. Which has been cool so far. Hopefully, there's been like kind of things I've noticed. We were just talking about downstairs. Like uh, the first show, I think people come and they're kind of like, um, which maybe makes sense. I don't, I don't know. I'll get to it. But um, they come and they're ready to rock. So maybe yeah. they're a little louder than uh, the show needs them to be. But then the second night, it's like words gotten around town. Like, oh, Max done this quiet, weird thing. He plays it for a really long time. So then the second night's always kind of quieter, but I don't know. We'll see if that happens here. I'm not really sure. It's been a whole, uh, it's been an experiment. But it's been cool, but I'm happy to be back. It's been well, cool. How are you finding, could you call it life on the road? I mean, you've been on the road a bit, haven't you? But you know what I was just saying, like 15 minutes ago to my band was that, uh, I think that I crave, and we were just talking about the countryside before the cameras came on. I kind of crave the countryside yeah. right now because it's all city. It's all airport. There's no gas station in the middle of nowhere, you know, in Europe or US or whatever. Mm. I crave it. I crave it. Um, but the city's nice too, but it kind of feels like, uh, especially Paris and London, sometimes, you know, it's very compact. You know? Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's been good. The tour has been cool. This is really mellow. Three shows in, you know, four cities, 12 shows total. That's pretty mellow. Is there any reason why you did it like that this time? I think, so I had a couple ideas when the, because the show's weird, right? For the 5Z hot dogs thing, it's like. Yeah, well, I haven't seen it yet. But. Well, I mean, it's, you know, just, I think inherently, I, cause I, you know, I didn't know what it was gonna be until we did it the first time, but yeah. you know, the, the album is weird, it's instrumental, you know, it's like, and then there's the other One Wayne G thing, which is also a lot of instrumental and just other songs that like, wouldn't really, you know, fit into like a festival set or something like that. Right. So I knew that we had, were going to do something a bit strange, or not strange, but like just different than what we, you know, have done previously. So, yeah, it's just been, it, it, you know what it kind of feels like is doing my solo show, which I've done many times before. I've done it in London before. I've done it all over the States. I've done it in other parts of Europe. Um, but it's like the solo show with accompaniment, I think. So, um, but it's been, yeah, I don't know. It's been really nice. And I think that luckily most of the venues have been kind of suited to this. Like that's why we're doing here. It's like nothing bigger than 1500 was kind of the rule, you know, a couple nights so that we can still sell a decent amount of tickets, not too many, but keep it special, keep yeah. it a little intimate, keep it like, uh, you know, and hopefully people come and uh, are cool with the, the way that we're rolling. But it's been good. It's been good. And it's kind of like, uh, it's funny because these are probably the only 12 shows we'll do this year, which is a little different than a couple of years ago. I'll That's tell you weird. Yeah. That's um, cool. Just yeah. for a little bit of context, Enemy haven't spoken to you since 20... Here Comes a Cowboy. What year was that? 19? 18? I don't know. Yeah, maybe um, 20. I don't know. So, and, and One Wayne G is essentially five years of recordings. Not everything you've recorded. I guess so, yeah. Time, I mean, it's, yeah, it's like a selection of... Uh, I think I kind of landed on like 200 would be a good amount of... You know, that's like a ridiculous enough amount yeah. to do. So I, there was way more, but I... I you know, I kind of went through it and, you know, scrapped a bunch of it. And then uh, it, it wound up being 199 because I think that um, there was so much and it took me a while to kind of siphon through it or kind of collect all of it or, or you know, organize it that uh, there it wound up, uh, wound up being like a, a duplicate or something or maybe like an alternate mix or something. I was like, oh, yeah. shit. So I scrapped one, then it went to 199. I didn't know what I was going to call it, but then the, the one Wayne G, 199, Wayne Gretzky, you know, greatest hockey player of all time. His jersey number is 99, so you get 199. What does a Canadian boy like me think of immediately? One Wayne Gretzky. So that's the uh, that's the history of the name. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I don't know. I think uh, it's been cool. You know, I, I you know, it was like uh, it's funny with the one Wayne G too, like how. 
people have responded to it where yeah. it's kind of like I put out five easy hot dogs I was really pleased that that was able to come out and and I just kind of felt like well maybe I'll clear the rest of my plate too because um who why not you know but some you know the, the different narratives that the kids because I don't really talk about it that much you know but the narratives the kids have he, this is his middle finger to the music industry I, I don't know what the <laughs> hell people are talking about but uh, it's just I don't know why not you know just try something. so one wing wasn't planned but when you're making five easy hot dogs well I, the way i see it is one five easy hot dogs is kind of a part of one way and g right okay you know? but it's like one way and g is i think just like uh it's just me you know it's me for five years you know take it or leave it it just is what it is there's like some stuff that you know so, especially like songs that sat around for a couple of years that so like I, there's a collection of the songs on one way and g that i did kind of have in a folder i was like i'll make an album out of these ones and I tried at one point during COVID and I was like, this is not, this doesn't feel right. So, you know, and then I was like, well, they're just going to sit there and I'll write some new stuff. But it's a nice way to get, you know, there's those ones. Then there's other things that are on there that are barely even music, you know? Yeah. There's like, I remember the kids were really picking up on this one that kind of just sounds like I'm banging on pipes, like in a Super Mario level or something. That's great. They're listening yeah. to that. My God. How do you know um, when you say kids are picking up on them? Kira what? will show me. Right. You know, she'll, she'll show me. She'll show you like TikTok TikTok or something. or something like that. I don't have any yeah. of this stuff, but you know. Or, I mean, people, I, I, I see, you know, the la- the people that run the label or like, you know, help with everything, they, they kind of yeah. see what's going on too. So they, what is it, the analytics or something like that? You know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what can I say? I've been in the business. For so a it's long not time. a middle finger to the industry. I think you know. What, no, I don't. I don't like giving it's, the middle finger to anybody. I don't think I'm a. You know, I'm not a mean guy like that. I would like to think, but um, but I think that I there are things about the way that uh, the music industry. I think just the way that like um, the music is released now that I find funny, and it was kind of fun to like play around with it. I guess in a way where, uh, like for example, like you know, I. I never did the Spotify, no streaming service. I used YouTube until like two years ago. I got a new truck and I wanted to be able to use Siri to play the music. Only way to do that was to get Spotify. And I was like, okay, I'll get Spotify after all these years. I mean, here's the thing, you know, all the artists say they don't like it because, you know, the pay scale is bad. I understand all that. I'm probably in the same boat, whatever. But my God, it's amazing. It teaches you, you know, it's so easy. Save, playlist, boom, boom, boom. Anyway, so that... You know, so I think it's like I've never really used something like that. But you, you, when you start using something like that and you come from a world of not having that before, it's kind of like, why don't we just chuck it all on there? And the, the other thing that I find really interesting, well, Spotify, Spotify is funny because it is still actually just like standard definition. Like they don't really have a high def option, which is stupid. And if anybody from the team sees this, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? Fix it. Everybody else is doing it. Just do it. What's wrong with you? Um, but anyway, but what I'm saying is, you know, the, the standard for like, because uh, I'm a nerd with the, the technical side of recording or whatever, but the, uh, not that this is that crazy or anything, but uh, but the, you know, the sampling rate of like uh, the standard for music is uh, CD quality, which yeah. is 44.1, which has probably been, you know, kilohertz or, or whatever. Um, that's the standard that was set probably in like the early 90s or something. It's 2023, baby. Let's kick it up. You know what I mean? And people say you can't really hear above 15, you know, 15K or whatever. I understand. But there's got to be some, you know. So you did, you did So that we did One Way and G is in 96K because I recorded 96K. So why not put it? I don't understand like mastering something and then downsampling. It seems like a waste of time. Um, and my master guy was happy to do it. David Ives. And yeah, it was cool. It's just like, why not try that? Why not put a shitload out there? For me, it was honestly like I like to listen to these, especially this stuff. A lot of the instrumental stuff I have a lot uh, less trouble listening back to because yeah. my annoying voice isn't isn't right there. You know what I mean? So it's like uh, it's almost like for me to uh, you know now I can just go on Spotify and listen to that. It's great. It worked. It's much. It's like an archive for me, but I didn't have to do the archiving and stuff. You know, they can do it instead. The streamers. So um, do yeah. You have, do you have any like? Um, if I was saying to somebody before. Um, it kind of makes sense what you're making now to me. It seems like you've mm. been going this more mellow direction for I think so. a while. But do you yeah. feel any kind of nerves about putting stuff out and the way people will react to it? React if, to if, it? If no, it's different than not what really. Kind of I mean, I think that I've essentially with the last couple of releases probably freed myself in Just, most regards. So, um, but I don't. I don't think it. I don't know. I almost feel like there was a long time where I was. Um, 
pretending to be something that I wasn't, you know, and like it, trying to do things musically that I maybe I'm not. I don't know. I, I feel like all the records I put out in the body of work is like very much me, but it's kind of like, uh, I think in regards to like maybe the more, you know, ambient or like uh, kind of video gamey sounding, like I love video game. Yeah. You know, I'm a nerd. I like anime, always have. For years I pretended not to because it wasn't cool. Now it's cool. So I'm just going to be me even more than I was before. But um, I think uh, there's like stipulations I have now for making my, my art or my music where it's like uh, I like to, um, it needs to feel natural. I don't want to force anything. You just got to, I like leaving things the way they are. So yeah. something comes out, that's the way it came out. That's the way it is. I'm going to leave it that way. Yeah. You know? Like purity. Yeah, the purity. Yeah. yeah. And I think... Um, Probably a bad way uh, to look at it if you want to make any money. But I don't, I'm luckily in a kind of a position right now where I'm okay. So I don't, I don't think that, it, you know, but I don't know. I think it's like um, maybe finally I'm, I'm growing up and I, I look at the, the world and the music industry and it's kind of like uh, maybe I just want to be more of an artist or something or, you know, pretend to be because uh, I mean, there's plenty out there. But I think there's also there's another side of the music industry where it is kind of like a, Sports. There's a lot of sports going on in music. Yeah, you know? so that's fine too. Do you feel like you're protecting? Because I've I've been listening to some other interviews you've been doing recently, yeah. like talking about how the character and the personality of an artist is what you like the most, and, what, great, and what's yeah. the most important. I think so. In a way, so, I think that you know, you know, people talk about AI now. They talk about this. There's like 15 people writing a song. There's like the beat yeah. makers and this. You know, all this stuff comes together to make this thing that is like this polished perfect golden egg and like we'll send it to the charts and see how it does you know um but yeah i mean for me it's just i think it's the same reason i always put out the demo records where it was like i uh i like seeing all the crap you know what I mean? or the you know it's like uh i don't know the human part is like the most important part to me in any kind of art so i think that uh i guess i'm just trying to remain human do you think it's under threat Ah. Uh... I think it is not uh, maybe up, uh, it's not on the, in the center stage right now. But I don't, a threat, I mean, I don't know, I don't know. Is AI ever going to be able to make a song that makes me go, wow, maybe, but like. <laughs> have you done the AI Mac stuff? Have you like. People have sent me some stuff, I think, but I yeah. don't really, yeah, I think that someone has, you know, made it so that my voice can sing other songs or something, but. Uh, no, what we were using AI for the chat GPT is that uh, you can get it to write you a pretty good, a tight five comedy set, so yeah. We'll have a bonfire at the crib and all, right. you know, do like a, a comedy set about being like an Italian centaur or something like that. It's pretty good. Yeah. But other than that, no, I don't, it's not really, I don't need it. I don't know. I, I'm not, you know, tech enough for it. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you kind of did like the opposite of, of AI really, like with five easy hot dogs. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about how you made that record. Sure, sure, sure. Um, um, in the back of, I don't know what the vehicle was. 1990 uh, Toyota FZJ80 Land Cruiser. Thank you. Yeah, good, uh, good, good, good car. Still have it. Um, yeah, I didn't actually record in the car, but it was like I drove the car around. But here's the, like I had had the name Five Easy Hot Dogs for years before that, pretty much all through COVID. And people were like, "What are you working on?" And I was like, "Well, my next record's going to be called Five Easy Hot Dogs." To the point where everyone yeah. was kind of like, "Where's Five Easy Hot Dogs?" And I was like. Eh. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And LA is a funny place where it's, it's like, uh, it's easy to get, you know, caught up with, you know, helping other people out. People are always coming through. It's like, you know, um, so I was like, the only way I'm going to get anything done is if I leave, I think. Um, but I was also kind of in this like manic, like, yeah, I'm just going to go. I don't know when I'm coming home. And everyone was like, okay. What did Kira say? Kira was like, I think you need it. You should go. And I was like, okay. So I went, she's cool. I mean, I go on tour all the time. She's used to, or used to so she's yeah. used to it. But, um, but it was a really, I mean, that, making that album for me was like a very uh, special time, I think. And it, I think, because um, I was alone for months in parts of the world, like the Pacific Northwest, west of the United States and Canada is like, for some reason, that part of the world is like, I feel very close to the, the earth and to nature and to, I don't know, it's like where I was born. And it's like uh, a lot of memories there. I, I grew up, you know, oh, I lived there when I was younger and. Something about it just really revs my engine. So, so yeah, I mean, going up through that way was nice. And then across the prairies where I grew up and then down through, I don't know, just, just places that I hadn't seen in a long time or cities I hadn't, you know, been to without touring in forever. So 
so yeah, but recorded in wherever I kind of could figure out, maybe hotels or Airbnbs or, uh, you know, friends' houses, or I stayed with my family a little bit in certain parts of Canada. And, and yeah, it, it, the funny thing about what came out as Five Easy Hot Dogs is like, I was going and recording every day and trying to do other things and, you know, have these full days. And I, I felt like that stuff was like, I was going to come back to it or it was like some unfinished or some kind of, I don't know. It was just like, I was, I felt this guilt where I was like, well, I brought all this recording shit. So if I don't make something today, then it's not gonna, I'm going to feel like an asshole for the rest of the day. So, so I would do something and then kind of file it away. And not everything I did on the trip made it onto the record, but the majority of it did. But yeah, but I mean, in that way, just cause it's like made, in a spot fairly quickly, not, I wasn't, you know, brain was kind of half on and then it was just the mixes or just whatever I kind of did real quick to bounce up so I could listen to it in my car. It's like in that way, it's like yeah. that purity thing is like very strong, even though it's made all over the country, you know, and all over two countries, I guess. But, um, but yeah, it's, and it's a funny thing too, cause it is like, it's, you know, I haven't put a record out in quite a while too. And then to put right. that out, everyone was like, what the fuck, you know? And it's like, hey, you know, it doesn't really bother me, but. but I liked the, how it just arrived. There was yeah, no, it's there was the same, no like, yeah, it's just no, a nice not loads little... of interviews, not loads of lead up or yeah, singles exactly. or whatever. Yeah. It just... But it's, it's, it's got that, uh, it, it feel, checks those boxes for me big time. And the shows too, just the 12, then that's it. And then we're never going to do it again. It's nice and tidy. Very tidy. You know, very tidy. Very tidy. But uh, it's cool. I don't know. I, I like the, you know, once I finished the trip and uh, wound up back in L.A., I actually, the trip kind of ended early because I decided to you quit You went to smoking. Coachella, right? Well, I, yeah, I left New York. I've been in New York for about a month and I was like, New York is great. I love New York City so much. Um, but it tricks you in a way where you can walk around and just drink coffees all day and bump into people. And you're like, damn, I got a lot done today. But you actually just spent $400 like doing nothing. Uh, maybe London's the same. I have no idea. But, uh, but yeah, so I was like, I got to get out of here because I'm not doing anything. This is insane. But yeah, so I left and I decided to quit smoking on this, this, this trip. Or there was like a drive. I was driving to Utah, Salt Lake City. Because we had a festival show there in like a month and a half. I was like, I'll just go there. I'll live there. And then we'll play the show and I'll just continue. We had another show in Mexico City. I was like, I'll just play the show in Utah. I'll just drive down to Mexico City. It's going to be fine. But little did I know that uh, I'd never tried to quit smoking before. It's fucked up. It's horrible. So, uh, yeah, I had like really wicked withdrawals for like three weeks and uh, kind of went loopy. Wound up in this little A-frame cabin like up near Zion National Park by myself. And kind of felt like I was in The Shining and it was too much. And I went home pretty quick. But then once I was there back home, yeah, I did go to Coachella. That was another, that was part, partially the smoking thing. I was like, if I go out to Coachella and I don't have a cig the whole time there, I'm probably good. Listening to the whole, you know, all the songs together in a, you know, in a package, I was like, oh, this is cool. I'm happy about this. This is great. So, yeah. I don't know. That was kind of when I decided, okay, maybe. Well, I, that was it. I didn't decide to put it out then because that was a while ago. It took me about a year. Yeah, but came out eventually. Because you were like, you said you were seeing family and stuff. Yeah. There was, wasn't there like, there was a lot going on in your family, right, at the time? Cause... Yeah, yeah. My dad had died not long before I took off on the trip. So that was pretty insane. Um, yeah. And I went up and, yeah, it was like, so especially on the West Coast of Canada, there was some, I would be recording, then I'd go out to see my uncle or I'd go out to see, you know, my aunt or my mom. I didn't see my mom or my, you know, on her side, like my other aunts in Edmonton for a really little My grandmother had died there too. It was kind of like, COVID was like a, yeah, it's crazy when the family members would die during COVID because it's kind of like, is there going to be a funeral? Like maybe in a couple of years when we can like hang out again. It's like, you know, double raw. But yeah, I mean, in that way too, it was like important, you know, just an important part of time of my life, you know, so, and, and it's nice to, uh, I've always had it with music, but the, um, the kind of like transportational uh, effect. You know, I can listen to my old records and be like, oh, yeah, this little place I did in Montreal or in New York or whatever. So, yeah. But th so those, I think, it's almost like I, I wanted to go and make these little anthems. So I had them to remind me of that period. And now I do. Um, but, you know, it, it, speaking about that in an interesting way, too, it's like, it's like uh, I have those memories of them. But also now, you know, we're here in London or wherever else. So it's like, it's a blend. It's, you know, they, they transform, they change. It's like... Uh, I don't know. I like it. It's cool. For me, it works. Yeah. 
Well, tell me more about the instrumental angle of, of doing it. When did you decide not to sing on the record? Mm. Was that premeditated? No, not really. I mean, I think it kind of ties into the um, just the way where I was making it and not thinking about it. Because lyrics take me too long. Because I could sit down and just make little ditties all day long. Um, yeah. But what I was planning on doing, and what I did a little bit at the beginning of the trip, was I would make these things. And if you you know you listen to it, it's kind of set up in a way where you could put lyrics on top of it. It's like you know A section, B half A double B. It's like that's how all of my songs have always been. You know, so so, so I, what I was doing is I would take them and put them in the car and listen to them in the car and try and write stuff as I was driving. And some of the stuff, you know, I remember some of the ideas I had, um, and they were cool. I think that, you know, but I think that'll, that'll always just be a mystery ether kind of a, I don't know if I'll ever put anything down, but that was the plan. Just never wound up getting around to it. That was kind of the idea once I got to Utah. I was like, okay, I'll take the stuff I have and give it a go. But uh, nope, nope. <laughs> was just uh, unable to sleep and having cold sweats instead. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah. It's quite an intense time to try and quit smoking, right? Yeah, it was nuts. Yeah. It's completely insane. Yeah. But I did it. Here's the other thing. My kick, too, because I've been sober for a couple of years off booze, too, and, and other whatever you want to, you know, substances for pretty much since the top of COVID. But uh, I think it's it's part, part of the Five Easy Hot Dogs thing as well, where there's like, uh, I have like this thirst for freedom. You know what I mean? Being free from booze, being free from whatever. I can go, I can do this, I can do that. Uh, yeah, and the SIGs. And no were, caffeine too, right now? Or was that changed? Caffeine, I, I come in and out of, but uh, okay. yeah, for a while I, I wasn't really doing it. But the caffeine thing is more like uh, if I drink coffee, it makes me feel like my heart is going to explode. So I'm kind of like, yeah, maybe not. But coffee, I'm not, I don't have any kind of like addiction to it. It's just kind of like, well, that would help. I'm exhausted. But the SIGs, with the SIGs, I'd already gone just to vaping, which is, you know. Jewels. The, the jewels, yeah. My friend calls them a uh, mouth fedora. <laughs> you know, which is uh, I think apt you know but yeah. uh, so I was doing that and then uh, yeah but the, the thing was I went into Canada and there was like these kids were like wow you're smoking is that a real jewel pot and I was like what do you mean like, what, are, what are you talking about because you can't get them you can get point zero two, like not enough nicotine to satiate so you know that. but that the realization of like I don't want to be addicted to something that's difficult to procure that's nuts I don't you know I'm not worth my time yeah you know and I was with Marlboro Reds or whatever. It's like you know, smallest town in rural China. You're probably going to be able to get Marlboro still. Jewel? No. Nah. Not happening. So, so now I don't need them at all. Fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> Feels good, I think. How, well, I still was going to ask you, like, how's all that working out? Because is it, like, there's this, I was going to ask you about this idea of who Mac DeMarco is that yeah. people had and was built up over this time. Lots of it was to do with smoking because you always had oh, for sure, yeah. cigarettes and there was a whole song about Viceroy mm -hmm. um, and this, all the antics, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, the parties and all that stuff. Like, I think I'm still that guy for the most part. I don't know. Yeah. I, mean, I think uh, cigarettes, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, it's like the caricature or like the, the um, cartoon character element. I think all of those things, like, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying I'm, here's the thing, even as a sober guy, I still go to the bar till last call, I'll be at the party till the end of the night, whatever. It's like, I'm not, I try and operate in the same way. Obviously now I think I go do things that I did before. I was like, man, I used to really hang for a long time, you know, uh, and it was fun because I was drunk, but now, I'm able to like clock it a lot quicker now and be like, oh my God, I'm going to go home. This is ridiculous. Do drunk people annoy you now? Uh, more than they used to, but yeah. I mean, it's fine. You know, I don't really, I don't really, in LA, I don't go out that much from my house. I kind of, yeah. or not to bars. I'll go to shows or whatever, but um, because I think I don't do it that often, when I do go out, I'm kind of like, uh, you know, it's kind of, I'm, I'm willing to endure, you know, just because uh, I don't get it that often. But, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, as far as the other stuff goes, it's fun. It's it's interesting to me in a way, especially doing the show like this, because it's like it's a challenge, you know. Because back in the day, it was like it's like, oh shit, we're losing the crowd. Where's the Jameson? But boom, and everyone's like, fuck yeah! You Did know, you really have those moments every every night? Really? You know, but it was easy. It, it was like part of the thing, you know, which is a bad way to roll. But <laughs> no, but I mean, it worked, I mean, you know, I the, mean, that or even crowd surfing. Like I would crowd surf so that everybody would walk out of the show being like that was the craziest shit. He jumped off a balcony. That's insane. And it is insane, you know, but it's like, uh, but I, I would prefer now to be challenged more where it's like, I hope the sound was good. I hope you played all right. 
hope my voice sounded okay. You know, it's like, if I can, if I can keep them just with the music, which I don't even know if I'm able to do. Like you'll see tonight. I think it's going okay. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, but that, I mean, to me, it's just more, uh, maybe I wasn't able to do it before or something. Or maybe I wasn't at that point of, you know, I don't know. I mean, especially because you've been coming to see us play for a long time. When we first started coming over to the play, like we had no idea yeah. what the hell we were doing. Well, I was thinking about that birthday show, the first, it's the first UK show in 2012 it's, or something. Yeah, completely nuts. Yeah. Jet lagged to all hell. We were talking about it yesterday when we got off the plane. None of us had really been jet lagged like that before. And we're all sleeping on the stage because it was like the coldest place with the AC. You know, we woke up like 30 minutes before the show. Like that's gnarly, you know. Which, you know, still the jet lag doesn't go away, but I think it's like uh, just the idea of like hopping on stage and being like, here, here, I, you know, it's like, we didn't know, you know, nobody knows. Or maybe some people do, but we didn't. Even though I'd been touring for a while at that point, but it's like, you know, when, when you level up like that or the venues get bigger like that really quickly, it's like, you have no idea what's going on. But, but maybe COVID was, a, you know, for me, it was like maybe useful in a way where it's kind of like, well, I'm just going to cool it see what I want to do, think about what I want to do, scale things back a little bit, change the way things sound, and hopefully go out and enjoy touring. And I, th I have been enjoying it, so it's been cool. Not you know, that I didn't enjoy it before. I, I, I did, but it was... I mean, it looked fun. Different. It was fun. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that there were points where it was kind of like, you know, neck in a 2-6 a of Jameson every night. That's not, that's not good for anybody, I don't think. But it's like... You know, I did that, and now I don't have to do, do it anymore. But, you know, it is what it is. And you're wearing your record label merch right yeah, now. Yeah, I feel like kind of a jackass, but uh, that's all I got. You know. And hoodie. I like this hat. I always wear this hat. The hoodies. Russell Athletic. It's a good fit. What can I say? It's nice. Yeah. 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 So yeah. tell me, you started the record label. Is that like an odd move for, for a guy who's trying to scale things back to give yourself... Um, you know, you're a, you're a music executive now. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> sort of. I think for me, it's like um, the whole label, the idea of doing like uh, uh, my own label initially was just so that I could own everything, you know, which is important to me. Um, just moving forward with everything, which, which, has been, which has been great, you know, and it's like, luckily I was in a position when we started it and still now where, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of, I have like a distribution deal through like bigger labels that have big networks and umbrellas or whatever. So it's, it's been easy. I mean, and the other thing too, is that it's like, you know, I think kids think that I, I, I kind of like uh, have like gone this grassroots, like, well, let's, you know, clear out, clear out the garage and start shipping the stuff out ourselves. And stuff. It's like, no, there's like a whole team that does everything for me pretty much. But it is, it's just an opportunity to, uh, you know, put my own stuff out and do weird shit like five easy hot dogs and one way in G. Like if I was, I don't know, maybe, I'm sure, you know, Capture Tracks, my old label would probably have been down, but, you know, some, I'm sure there's some labels out there that would have been like, yeah, no, I don't think so, kid, what are you thinking? But, um, but yeah, it's like, I, I, I guess it's just nice to be in a position where I have this artistic control and, and can help my friends out. Like we put out, um, my friend Vicky's put out a couple, well, she, we're working on her second record right now. And, and uh, my friend Tex, you know, he's, we're also working on his second record right now. And, and Daryl that plays with me, we're trying to get some of his music out. And it's cool. But it, like, like you said, you know, I'm a big wig now. But I mean, I think that, you know, all these artists that I'm trying to help, it's like we're kind of relatively unknown, you know, but, but being musicians for a long time. So I just want to do things that are cool and uh, music that interests me and um, help out a little bit. I don't know. And do they, do you think people, how do you think, Artists like that see you as someone who's been doing it for, you haven't been doing it for that, well, a while, but. Doing what, the label thing or no, the doing, music doing thing? Doing music, like being, being a musician. I don't know, I don't know. I mean, Daryl, Daryl grew up, he's a quite a bit, he's 27, six, six or seven right now. But when he was younger, it was kind of prime age for like when uh, there was the, you know, crazy fans for me all the time. So, yeah. so I think he, he, he has well versed in, you know, what, uh, what I've done, I guess Tex, Tex used to play with Kieran J. Callanan, so, so he, we've just kind of been homies forever. And Vicky I met through Anderson Pack and crew. So with Vicky, I mean, Vicky has like Grammys for like doing work right. on other people's music. So it's kind of like, it's kind of, a, it's just an interesting, you know, path. It's kind of like, well, I got that on the shelf, but I guess we'll yeah. <laughs> go down to the studio. And you know, it's like, I mean, it's amazing. You mentioned your, your yard in LA a couple of times. 
The garden. The yard, yeah, the backyard. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, what's that looking like at the moment? Who's hanging out there? Uh, it's not, I mean, I have my little studio. It's like a converted garage. There's a lot of motorcycles out there right now. Well, I was going to get to those. Yeah? I, yeah. Ooh, I miss them right now, I'll tell you. But uh, it's looking pretty good. There's a little sauna. There's a tree, a palm tree. I look at that a lot. Um... Right now we're having the back redone a little bit. We're gonna put a little yurt, a couple planter boxes. Nice. Roger Riddle Hoover, my gardener. God bless you, Roger, <laughs> if you ever see this. Hope you enjoyed the show at the Ford. We were happy to have you. Um, yeah, it's cool. I don't know, LA is very like, uh, I feel very peaceful there. I think I just also feel like at home over there on the West Coast, anywhere, kind of the whole you know states in Canada. I haven't really been down the coast too much in Mexico, but I will, I will and see how it makes me feel. But, but yeah, I, lo I love it. I don't know, but it is kind of, you know, people always just pop up. We lo we're located pretty centrally in LA. And right. A lot of people in the neighborhood. Uh, my friend Jared, he's a music producer, lives just down the street on the corner, Kitty Corner. Makes a lot of music with Remy Wolf. He wanders up all the time. He's kind of like a Kramer, I guess. He's like the Kramer in our life. Is the cat still there? Pickles has passed away, I'm afraid. I'm sorry to hear that. Nah, it's okay. God bless him. We miss you, Pickles, if you're watching this on Kitty TV up in Kitty Heaven. But no, he was a good... Then we, I think here's the thing. That cat arrived filthy, wrecked, covered in rain, dirt, eating garbage, you know, chicken bones. And he became quite a gentleman over the years. Mm. So I think that we gave him the best life we could have given him. So... I'll never forget you, Pickles. What's a typical day like? How, how much are you working on music at home at the moment? Right now, I'm not working on music at all. Um, after I put One Way and G out, I like haven't done a thing. Uh, but we were rehearsing a lot, and I've been helping other people with their music, so it's kind of like, I feel, yeah, like that's... And we were doing, I, you know, we did a lot of merch for the label, and I needed to kind of rework my whole, like, internet, you know, the websites and all the other... Because all that shit I do on my, on my own. So it's like, there was a lot of you know, sec or, you know, sideline to music work that had to get figured out. So I will, I will do it again. I just need to kind of get uh, back and in the right headspace. And it's another part of it too, where I think that, you know, I've been doing it for so long and I put out enough where uh, if it's not, if I'm not in the right zone or like, I don't feel like, I don't want to write something when I'm like feeling crappy or, you know, depressed or what, because then the music just ends up coming out like that. You know, we'll see how it goes. I don't know. Eventually I will. I feel like I'm saving. I've been saying this on stage. I'm saving up the juice. And then maybe it'll all come out at once. Or maybe well, don't you have an idea, like as a final question, yeah. to put enough gear that fits in the back of a bike and go and travel and record the next I, record I like that? I think this is a plan. This is a plan that I've been... Yeah, the pro, here's the thing. The gear part, I think I can get no problem. But guitars, it's hard to get guitars much smaller than they are. So... But I've seen online, there's some people that make these uh, hard shell, len uh, 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 what is it, pannier cases. I'm gonna figure it out. It's gonna look insane, but I'm gonna figure it out. And have you got any kind of inkling of what the next record may Sound? be like? Um, I'm gonna sing. I, I like sing. I'm, on this tour, I forgot that I like to sing. And the thing is too, is that uh, um, now that I don't smoke, I, yeah, it feels good. You know, it doesn't disappear, it doesn't hurt. The notes are there. So. <laughs> but uh, I think, uh, I'm not really sure. I have, I have an idea for a record. I won't give it totally away. Or it's not even really an idea. It's kind of the same situation as Five Baby Hot Dogs. I have an idea, I have a title, and I have the place to do it in. Will it end up getting done there? I'm not sure yet. That's why I won't give it away, because I don't want to, you know, you know, stab myself in the back or whatever. But uh but yeah, but I also am going to do that. But I think here's the thing, is that doing the driving around thing in North America, I've been doing it since I was like 15, and uh, you can plot me anywhere. And Mexico's a different story. Maybe I should do it in Mexico. Would be so, nice. But either Mexico or South America or Europe or somewhere where I'm a little further away from my comfort zone. I mean, right after this, these shows, I'm just going to take off and rent a car and go, we'll see where we go, I don't know. But, um, but yeah, I think that uh, I need to be uh, shocked a little bit more, you know, put in some situations that are maybe not the easiest to uh, navigate. I don't know, you know, language barriers. You know, maybe. That kind of thing. Yeah. Mac, thank you so much. My Thanks pleasure. everyone for listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>